everyone! My name is Alex and I'm the Education Coordinator of Japanese Friendship Garden and thank you for purchasing your Natsu Summer Kit! So today we are going to start off with the Koi Watercolor. Now for this kit, you'll have your bag of salt, an eyedropper, your watercolor paint and brush, your black sheet of paper, and be sure to get out your glue from your bag. Now what you'll need from home are your pencil, a reference of a koi fish, a bowl of water and a plate for your watercolors, and of course, some wipes just in case you make a mess. Now let's go ahead and start. So first off, you're gonna use your koi fish reference and just draw out the shape. Now if you wanna do one fish or two, it's up to you. And here's just one fish. I also added a few shapes if you'd like. That's optional. Next, we're gonna get out our glue. And a little glue goes a long way. So next, you are going to just lightly start tracing glue over your shape. And remember, don't use too much at first because if it's too wet, uh, it will actually cause the watercolors to run. And then you just want to lightly fill in with some glue. Now you don't want to use too little glue as well, otherwise the salt will not stick. If you have to spread it out with the nozzle, feel free to do so. Alright, so here we have our filled in koi fish and shapes with the glue. Next, we're going to put some salt on. Now be sure to use this sparingly. So you're just going to pour some. You don't have to pour all of it yet. And try to Spread it out on the sheet as much as possible. If you need to do it over a trash can, please do, because this will sometimes make a mess. Again, just gonna try to spread it as much as possible without spilling it everywhere. Now here you have still a lot of salt, so if you need to shake it over the trash can, do it. Because once it dries, uh, if there's too much salt, some of that salt will come off as well as your colors. Alright, 
This should be good enough. So next we're going to get our watercolors. Now we have 12 colors to choose from and if you want to mix and match that's up to you. So I'm going to go ahead and try to do the pattern of this koi fish right here. So next you're going to get your eyedropper and you're going to get some water and let's go ahead and choose light blue. I'm going to do two colors. I'm going to do light blue and I'm going to do purple. Now you need to mix some of that together just so it gets the watercolors going, then do so. Okay, looks like our colors are ready to go. So I'm going to start off with purple. And try to be as careful as you can. Don't squirt out too much because if you do, it will actually pool and then it might get all over your sheet. So I'm just gonna do a little bit at a time and you'll see that some of it will start to spread. And you can use the eyedropper to guide it. I'm just going to do random spots. So we'll go ahead and do its belly. See, you want to be careful because some of it wants to pull. And then if you need to, go ahead and squirt some excess onto your little plate. I'm going to try some blue next. So again, just going to lightly squirt some. Let the color spread. Gonna do some tail area. If you need to put some more water in your watercolors, go ahead and do so. Just don't overfill it, otherwise it'll seep into the other colors. And you're going to do this until you're happy with the colors that you have. Okay, so now I have all my colors that I want. Now be very careful. It's important to let this dry for an hour or two. And once it is, you're going to get something beautiful like this. Okay, so next. Let's do an origami frame. This one's going to be really easy. All you need is your wooden frame, some Mod Podge, a paintbrush, origami paper, scissors, and then of course some wipes just in case you get a little stickiness. Let's go ahead and start. So we have several different colors you can choose from. 
cut them however you want. So for example, I'm just gonna do a few straight colors. Let's go ahead and cut them. So I got my origami paper cut out. So the next step is going to be applying the first layer of Mod Podge. Now this works with both a glue and a sealer. So we're just gonna squirt a little bit at a time. And then we're gonna use our sponge brush to give a nice even layer. We're gonna do the first side first. It's a nice, even layer. All right, that's our first side. And of course, I already got a little glue on myself, so make sure you use some wet wipes. So our next step is going to be to apply the origami paper. Now, if it's a little uneven, that's okay, because you can, after you're done applying it, cut off the excess. Okay, so I got my first side, but as you can see, there is a little excess. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cut it off. Now, if you wanna use the excess for just decorating all over, just cut little bits and pieces, feel free to do so. And one more side and then we're ready to go. All right, and here's our first side. Doesn't look pretty yet, but just wait until we finish. So next, you're gonna flip over and just repeat the same steps as before. is Mod Podge, Apply, and Trim. All right, so we have both sides done. So the next step is going to be Mod Podge. So again, do another thin layer, because this is what's going to both seal and give your frame a nice glossy finish. And again, even layers. All right, so I just finished putting the Mod Podge. So the last step is going to be to just set it to the side and let it dry for about 30 to 40 minutes, after which you will have a completed origami frame. You can glue a picture to the back, or if you just wanna have it for decorations, it's good to hang on your wall or your desk. Anywhere is fine. Let's start the next one. And we're back. So let's go ahead and start on the bamboo wind chimes. Make sure you don't lose your beads in this one. All right, so this one doesn't have too many. So you're gonna have six bamboo sticks, 20 beads, 
and several pieces of string. So you're gonna have five pieces of string that are 12 inches and one that is 15 inches. Now you're gonna kinda notice uh, the different sizes of the bamboo sticks. So the longest one is going to be your base from which the other five are hanging from. So we're gonna put that to the side from now. You're gonna see the second longest will be in the center, followed by the next set that will be on your, you can either do inside or outside. It's whichever you prefer. And then you'll have your smallest one. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with the smaller one first. So make sure you find your string. Make sure it's the 12 inch one and not the 15 inch. So this will be the one. And I'm gonna start off by putting it through the hole like so. Now the next step would be to put some beads, just one bead at the end. And you're gonna do a double knot. and try to do the knot over the knot so when it does it, it won't catch uh, through the bead. If you have to do three, then do three. Alrighty, so we got this tied. Next, you're gonna choose three beads. Either two or three. So I'm gonna go ahead and do one white, one black, and we'll just go ahead and do another one white, like so. Next, you're gonna get your largest bamboo, which is your base. And you're gonna start off with putting it through one of the ends. And this one can be a little tricky. All right, so we got it through the hole. So the next, just like with this end, we're gonna go ahead and do one more bead. Now also, while you're doing this, if you wanna measure out how far along you would like the bamboo, then go ahead and do so. So I'm gonna go ahead and do one black bead. And I like it about this length. And I'm gonna go ahead and again, do two or three knots. And here we have it tied. And if you want, go ahead and trim just a little bit, the excess. I'm gonna go ahead and do it on this end as well. Make sure you don't do too much to not risk uh, untying the knot. And here we have for the first one, easy peasy. So then the next step, you're gonna repeat, but just with the second longest, like so, followed by the third longest in the middle, and then all the way as a row. All right, so here we have all five bamboos attached to the main base. So the last step is going to be to tie the big loop. Now there's two ways you can do this. You can either do it, oops, in here it's a little tangled. You can either tie it like this from one end to the other, or if that's too much, you can go ahead and tie in the center like so. And then all you would have to do is just tie the other end to whatever fixture you like. 
and it's completed! Alright, and we're on to our next craft, which is the Japanese lantern. So for this craft, you're going to need up to 22 lolly sticks, a sheet of transparent paper, hot glue sticks, regular glue, scissors, a pencil and ruler, an optional Sharpie, and of course, your hot glue gun. So there's two different versions to doing this lantern. As you can see from this one, this one's a little more complex. You'll see that there's four sticks going down on one side and three sticks going down on the other. But today I'm gonna show you how to do a more simple one with just two and two. Let's go ahead and start. So your first step is gonna be to place your lolly sticks the way you want your lantern. Might be a little hard to see with this camera, but that's what your instructions are also for. It's really good to place your sticks first before you glue, so that way you know exactly where you want the sticks to be. And also the way you're gonna do it is, even though all four sides are gonna have four sticks each, uh, you're gonna have two that'll be different. So for example, as you can see, I have the sticks a little closer to the edges on this one, and then I have the ones on this side a little farther into the middle. And that's because when you put them together, you're gonna have the sticks stack on one another. So as you can see, I have my lollies placed. You'll notice that these two are the same. Again, the lolly sticks are more closer to the edge, while on these ones, they're a little further into the center. So now that they're all even, I'm gonna go ahead and use our liquid glue and glue them together. Just do a dot of glue like so, don't do too much and just press down. If there's a little excess that's still on the lolly, don't worry about it. And just press and keep going. And be sure to be careful. Try not to move it too much after gluing, otherwise it will wobble back and forth and then you'll have to uh, realign them. And the good thing is, is once this starts to dry, if it's still a little bit wob wobbly after trying to place them together, you can use your hot glue. So, I did hot glue this one, and now I'm gonna kinda check if the glue starts to cause the uh, lollies to fall, that's okay. But as you can see, like from right here, uh, the glue or the lollies are a little still uh, too far close to the edge, so I need to move them down. So, whoops, they match like this. So it might take some finessing, but just be sure to uh, make it so that they align together so you'll be able to attach them. So we finally got our glue sticks all hot glued up. As you can see, they are even for this side. Whoop. And even on this side. So your next step is going to be your transparent paper. Now you're gonna measure your squares first. And you are gonna measure from this end all the way to this end. That's gonna be where your transparent will be glued to. So just measure that and then cut it. So here we have four inches. 
four by four and a half. So here's the four inches, and next it's going to be four and a half long. Now I can cut. Now do keep in mind, try not to have your lolly sticks too far apart because then you might not have enough uh, transparent paper. So as you can see, I have it cut out. So next, I'm going to be gluing on the glued side. And with this one, you can actually use your liquid glue. If you would like to use your hot glue, go ahead, but you don't want to waste too much since you only have two sticks. Apply like so. Here you have it. Now you're gonna do this for all four of them. Now I have our transparent paper glued. So the next step is optional. If you'd like to draw on a design, then just go ahead. So I'm gonna do little paw prints, cause I love cats. Who doesn't love cats? I'll go ahead and draw a cat face on another one. Isn't it just adorable? All right, so your next step, and it's close to the last one, is going to be to put these together. Now be very careful. What you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna put them together like slats, like so, and then just glue it. So glue the sticks that are touching. Get the first one. And be careful you don't burn yourself with the hot glue. It's not fun. So I'm gonna go ahead and let that dry before I move on to the next one, and then the other two slots. And this is complete. There's only one more step to do, and that's to get your tea light that's in your bag. So you're just gonna flip on the switch. You might not be able to see it too clearly now, but once you're in the dark, oh, thank you you'll be able to see the illumination of your lovely lantern. You could put this on your desk or next to your bed. If you want it for a night light or decoration, whatever you want, you got. So here we are with our last craft and that is the bonsai tree, my favorite one. Now in this kit, it may not seem like you have a lot, but all you need for this 
is some foil, paper towel, a square piece of cardboard for your base, hot glue sticks, liquid glue, your paintbrush from your watercolor kit, your paint, brown, green, and white, some wet wipes, a bowl of water, a plate for your paint, and as optional, a reference picture of your bonsai. Now, for this size, you won't need all of this. So if you would like to make a bigger scale or make multiple trees, you can. Let's get started. So first thing is we're gonna be taking our base and we're gonna take our foil. Now I'm just gonna start off with some small strips cause we're gonna start with the roots of the tree. Make sure your hot glue gun is hot and ready cause you're gonna start using it right away. So I'm just gonna crumble this up to look like little roots. Doesn't look like much now. And then I'm gonna go ahead and try to place it where I want to. And you're gonna wanna do four to five roots for your tree. So again, just tear off a little. If it's a little thicker, it doesn't all have to be even. Cause as you know, a tree is not that even. It's not symmetrical. And see, I already got two roots going. So I'm just gonna go ahead, try to wrap them around together before hot gluing them. Both to each other and to the base. Be careful to not burn yourself because it does hurt. And it's okay if you get some glue on the base or some extra glue on the foil because you will be covering it with the paper towel and paint. So you won't even notice it. Oop, I need some more. If there's some little strings, again, don't worry about it because you'll be able to easily take that off before we get to the paper mache part. And again, I'm gonna go ahead and add three more, three more roots. All right, so here we have our roots. And as you can see, I wrapped them around because just like a tree trunk, it kind of wraps around all the way to the top. So now we're gonna kind of go towards the middle. And this is up to you if you would like to do it like I'm doing, or if you would like to add a few more branches. Because as you know, there are many different types of bonsai trees in all shapes, sizes, and colors. So again, just gonna Crumble up my foil and start working towards the base. And it's important that you give it a nice curve. Don't have just a straight tree, that's no fun. And once you hot glue it too, it will make it a little easier to form the way that you want, so. I'll probably give it a little more of a curve once I've glued it together. And I think I'll give it three or four branches. Again, don't worry if the glue isn't perfect because you're not even going to see it once it's completed. If anything, it adds to its character.
see that's why you also be careful so you don't get hot glue on your finger. Also, just some advice. It's good to have, if you want it to be thick, make sure it's kept thicker around the bottom and middle and not towards the top, otherwise it can topple your tree over. And I'm gonna just go ahead and wrap it around like so. Just apply a little bit of glue to keep the new piece on. Go ahead and do another branch that goes out towards this way. So I think that'll be really cool. And again, it just makes the base a little more sturdy. So just go ahead and keep doing this for as many branches as you'd like. All right, and here I have my tree base. So as you can see, I just did four, uh, but in this one that's already finished, I, I'm sorry, I did three here and four here. However many you want, it's up to you. Just make sure there's not too many so it doesn't topple your tree over. So the next step is going to be applying the paper mache. Now you're gonna need your plate, your liquid glue, some water, paper towel, and your paintbrush. Again, you have plenty of material if you wanna go bigger or if you wanna do multiple trees. So first off, I'm gonna tear off really tiny pieces and it's probably a good idea if I get a little wet wipe because I probably will get a little sticky. If you're familiar with paper mache, usually they tell you to do a glue water mixture. But with this, I find that a little bit difficult. So instead, I'm gonna start off with doing just a little bit of glue going to take you a long way. And next I'm going to put some of this paper towel on top just to get it started. And then I'm going to lightly brush some water with the paintbrush and just start dabbing it. Because what this will do is it'll soften up the paper towel, uh, which will soak through the glue and help stick it to it. So as you can see, just lightly dabbing it, and this paintbrush will help you uh, shape it as well. If you feel like you need just a little more glue, go ahead, but again, don't go crazy. This bottle will take you a long way. Gonna go ahead and just do a little bit more. And apply. And 
and just keep doing this until you cover the entire tree base. Don't rush it either, otherwise it'll become overly soaked and we don't want that. And as you get more done, you'll start to see that it's looking less like foil and a little more like some tree bark. So now, as you can see, we have all our paper towel wrapped around this tree base. Now do make sure that it is uh, all completely moisturized because what that does is it does stick to the glue, helps the paper towel stick, and when it hardens, it'll be a lot easier to paint. So try to make sure there's not a single dry piece of paper towel but obviously don't drench it completely. And now you're gonna wait for it to dry. This can take anywhere between one and two hours. Don't start painting it when it's still moist because otherwise the paint won't pop out as much. Let's wait. One, two, and three. Okay, so we waited a few hours and now it is dry. So the next start, or the next step, is going to be to paint. So you got your paint, make sure you got a cup or bowl of water, and a plate. And of course, some wet wipes. So you can go ahead and open one of the browns. And the good thing about this being so small is this paint will take you a long way, which is why with the materials you have in your kit, you will be able to either make a bigger bonsai tree or more than one. So we're just gonna take some brown paint and just start painting the tree. Make sure you try to get all of it. You don't have to worry too much about the tips because we will be putting on the leaves next. And here we have it. We got most of the bark painted, but we're gonna do one more step, which is the shading. So what I did was I already put some brown paint into the plate. And next we're gonna open up the white paint. So 
So go ahead and just do a little bit. Just a little bit of the white paint. And you're gonna mix it with your brown paint. And what that does is it's going to give it a lighter shade. If you want it to be a little darker, then just mix some more brown. But we're gonna go ahead and do this shade. So next, I'm just going to lightly brush the sides kind of where it turns, where the bark turns and curves. If you got too much paint on your brush, then go ahead and wipe that off. And then just lightly brush. It's probably harder to see on the camera but I'm already getting some light over where it curves and twists. Gives it a more realistic effect. Try not to do too much because then it'll definitely show. And once it dries completely, it's gonna look really good. So don't be too discouraged if it's right now just looking like a blob of light brown paint. Just gonna do just a tad bit more. All right, and here we are. Again, it's probably harder to see here, but in person it's gonna look a lot more cool. So now we're gonna let this dry for about 30 minutes, and then we'll get on to the leaves. So our tree bark is nice and dry. So next is we're gonna be working on the leaves. So just like before, we're gonna take a little bit of foil. And this time, instead of making it long, we're gonna kind of make it flat like a pancake. Obviously it doesn't have to be too flat. And if you wanna make it bigger, you can. So this one's a little small but I'm gonna go ahead and save this one because I'm going to layer some of the bunches of leaves. Get a bigger piece of foil. Kinda make it circular to where it's curving in. And if you want, you can go ahead and like test where you would want to put your leaves. So this is a pretty good size for this one. I'm gonna go ahead, get my hot glue gun. 
And first I'm gonna do the tip of the branch. ahead and place my bunches of leaves. And you're just going to keep on doing this for however many branches you have and however many layers you want to do. Again, gonna hot glue the tip. Make sure there's not too much glue, otherwise it will drip off. Just fasten it on. There's a little string, that's okay, because you can easily take that off. And do kind of look around the tree to make sure it looks nice on both sides as well. And don't burn yourself with the hot glue.
And that is it for hot gluing your leaves. So just make sure you clean off any glue strings because we don't want that to get uh, mixed with the water glue mixture. So here you are. Like I said, if you want to layer some on top of one another, then go ahead. Just check around, make sure it looks nice on all sides. If you want, go ahead and move the foil. If you want curved more, go ahead. If you prefer more straight, then do that too. And now we're ready for our paper mache once again. So just like last time with the bark, you're gonna get your paper towels, your liquid glue, bowl of water, and your paintbrush. And as you can see, I haven't even used the full page of the paper towel, maybe only a quarter, less than half. So this will take you a long way. Go ahead, just get little pieces of the paper towel. Get your glue. And start putting some glue on the paper, on the uh, foil. If you want to spread it out because there's too much, go ahead and do that. Get some paper towel. Mix some water and start pressing it onto the foil. Now just some advice, we're only going to be putting the paper towel mache on the top of the foil. There's really no need to do it on the bottom just because unless you're going to be turning over your tree just to look under, you won't have to worry about seeing foil and you can even paint the foil green on the bottom. So it'll still give it the nice effect. So just continue to do this until all the top is covered with the paper mache. So we finally got our paper mache on our leaves. I know it kind of looks like a little hot mess express on top, but uh, we will be painting it. So just let it dry for maybe an hour or two and then start painting it green. Okay, so this is all nice and dry. So for the next and final part, we're going to paint the leaves. So go ahead and get your paint. Gonna pop open the green one. And just like with the tree bark, you're just gonna paint your leaves. Don't go too hard with your brush so you don't accidentally take it off the branches. If you do, just go ahead and get your hot glue gun and just glue it right back on. And as I said before, go ahead and paint the underside as well. We don't have to worry about looking under it too much, but if you're a perfectionist, just go ahead and do so.
All right, almost finished. I'm gonna go ahead and just paint a little bit on some of the undersides that I would be able to see just a little bit of green. All right, and here we have this. So the last step is going to be, once again, the shading. I'm gonna go ahead and actually, since I won't be making another one, uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and use the same little pot. I'm gonna rinse my brush so I don't mix any green into the white. Go ahead and pop that open. And just like with the brown, we're gonna mix white into the green to give it a more lighter effect. If you wanna do it on a plate, go ahead and scoop some of the paint onto the plate and just mix as you go. And you'll only need very, very little. All right, it's looking good. And just a little bit more. There's no right or wrong answers. It's whatever you feel. And I'm just gonna lightly dab just give it a nice little effect. And once it dries, you'll be able to see it a lot more. Don't try to do long streaks because otherwise you'll definitely see it was painted. Just a little bit more. And that's it. So again, just let this dry for about 20, 30 minutes and your bonsai tree will be complete. If you wanna go an extra step, then get yourself a bowl and some white sand and put your bonsai tree in it, cover the cardboard area with sand and you'll have yourself a nice little zen garden with a bonsai. And that's our DIY set for the Natsu. Be sure to look forward to our next one, Aki, coming to you this fall.